Hello everyone and welcome back to Kentucky Garden Gal. I am Nancy and today we are at the Historic Octagon Hall in Franklin, Kentucky and I happen to have the grandson of Billy Bird, Isaac Jones, Hello. with us. And in how many days will you be my nephew? Uh, I guess it's six now. Six days he'll officially be my nephew. So I'm so excited. This is wedding week for us and uh, there's a lot of excitement, but we are going to get a private tour of the Octagon Hall. So let's see what all this is about. Hello, I'm Isaac Jones. This is uh, Octagon Hall Museum. Uh, we started this place in 2000. Uh, so a brief history of the house and we'll sort of just have a timeline here. Uh, 1847 was the year that this house began being built. Uh, it's an eight-sided home. It is the uh, only eight-sided brick home in the state of Kentucky. Uh, it's actually one of the only eight-sided brick homes in all of the South. Uh, there are quite a few eight-sided uh, homes up north in New England area, but this is really the furthest one that is South. Uh, so it started being built in 1847 and it finished in 1859. It took a grand total of about 12 years to build the house. Uh, the reason it took so long to build was every piece of wood that you see in this house and every brick that you see was either cut down or fired or uh, salvaged from this property. The limestone foundation was quarried on the property as well, and you'll see that in the basement. Uh, but this house is all original. Uh, we, we do have some modern updates to it. To, you know, make it functional, such as, you know, a bathroom and things of that nature and gas heat. But other than that, this house is about 95% original. Uh, it was built by Andrew Jackson Caldwell, who was a Confederate sympathizer. He, uh, this house was used during the Civil War as a Confederate hiding place as well. Uh, the house has a lot of history that goes along with it. Uh, it also has, you know, some other paranormal aspects that go along with it as well. Uh, but you get that when you have the amount of tragedy that was here in this house and just the all in all history of the house. Uh, you end up getting some things that you can't necessarily explain. Uh, in about 2000, my grandfather, Billy Bird, the founder of Octagon Hall Museum, started a uh, 501c nonprofit and uh, got control of the house to be able to run a museum. Uh, his dream was to make this house a living history museum where anyone and everyone can come and see just about the way that people would have lived in the 1800s. Uh, we have that for the most part, other than some you know, modern amenities such as electricity and water, but for the most part it is a you know, natural history and uh, living history museum. Uh, the furniture that's in this house is not original to the house, but it is all period furniture to the house. Uh, it's all around the same 1850-1860 range. Uh, the furniture that's here, the majority of it was donated by Mr. Uh, Mark Simpson Stewart out of uh, Franklin, Kentucky when he passed. He was an avid collector of any and all uh, things old and uh, historical and we were able to get his life's collection when he passed. And uh, that's the majority of the furniture that you'll see if you ever come here to the hall. Uh, when you come to the hall, you get a history tour as well as a possible paranormal tour. You sort of go whichever way you want to go with it. Uh, the house sits on 300 acres. Uh, it was 1,500 back in the 1800s, uh, but over time it had been dwindled down to about three. Uh, we sit on about 10 acres right here that we serve as the property and the rest of the 300 is farmland uh, that we oversee and take care of. The, uh, my grandfather, as I said, when he started this in 2000, what his dream was was to create a living history museum and that's what we're trying to keep going you know, to this day. And uh, being able to teach the younger generation about something that's Simple as the way people lived and the Civil War and just that time period is, you know, very special to me. And to keep his dream going is uh, very special.
Hello. We're going to start our tour and come on in. Oh my goodness, Isaac, let's look right here. Yeah, right here we have a uh, Confederate hiding spot. Uh, one of the many Confederate hiding spots that were used on the property. Uh, what they would do is actually, that's a hollow space in the wall that they would have lowered people in from the uh, attic above, or the uh, closet above. Look so, at the moldings, everything. Yeah, all the moldings are original. Uh, oh, the, whoops, the uh, chandelier right there. Is that original, do you think? Not original to the house, no. It is an old one, though. Okay. Uh, here we have oh, the gi gigantic front door. Oh, it is huge. It barely opens up. It's made perfectly to fit in here. It barely, barely opens, but it's ginormous. So custom. Yes. Everything in this house is custom. Uh, here we have the formal dining room. some photos that people have done. Okay. So here we have the formal dining room with the builder of the house, Andrew Jackson Caldwell, and his second wife, Harriet, above the mantel here. Uh, this house is very, uh, very sound. You'll notice it when you're walking along the floors. You know, there, you don't hear very much creaking as you're walking, uh, especially to be over 200 years old, it's amazing how sound it is. But this is where they would have eaten uh, and had their all their meals. Uh, the meals would have been prepared either downstairs in the uh, winter kitchen if it was cold outside and you wanted the heat to be in the house. Uh, if you didn't want the heat to be in the house, you would uh, cook outside actually in the summer kitchen, which you'll see that as well. Uh, if you come this way, you can see the stairs that go upstairs. Uh, this room here is just sort of our catch-all for everything. It's not much in there. Uh, this here is the parlor room. This is where people would have, you know, sat and meet. And actually, this is where funerals were held uh, in the house. Uh, back in the day, they didn't have, you know, funeral homes. Uh, so you would have them in, in the homes of either the people that died or a family member that was close and would have it here as well. Uh, the last funeral that was held here was uh, Andrew Jackson Caldwell when he passed away in 1866. Uh, that was the last one that was held here. Uh, and the name funeral parlor actually comes from the people that would have their funerals in, you know, their parlors. I did not know that. Uh, now, what's the significance of this flag right there? Uh, that was just the uh, Kentucky Volunteers flag. Okay. Every general and every unit sort of had their own flag. Uh, you know, a lot of people see the normal cross and think that's the Confederate flag. That's, in fact, not the Confederate flag, but that's the uh, flag of the battle flag of Northern Virginia. Okay. There's plenty of different flags. Uh, such as up here, we have the, uh, the Hardy flag, and that was just General Hardy's flag that he would have used in battle. So every, every, every uh, general had their own flag that they would have flown. A lot of them were very similar, uh, but for the most part, everyone had a different one. Uh, we have plenty of different uh, antiques and things of that nature that were either found on the property or uh, accumulated over the years. All the furniture, uh, as I said, for the most part was donated by Mr. Simpson. It was just absolutely gorgeous. Then Simpson was a native to Simpson County? I believe he was a native, but he wasn't the one that was named, like Simpson County was named after. So he how, did he, how did he end up with his stuff? Just years and years and years of collecting. He uh, was, let's see, I don't know if you remember the house that was across from Piggly Wiggly that had that brick wall in front yes. of it. That was his house, right next to Franklin Bank. Okay. And when did he pass? He passed in 2018. Okay. Okay. What are some things that are original to the property, like around in here that you found? Uh, we found over here we have some slave tags, actually. Oh, okay. Which I don't know if I'm going to be able to get you 
tags over here were actual slave tags that would have been a war such as like dog tags. Some of them were found here, some of them were found other places. Uh, the majority of this stuff down here was found on the property, whether it be through uh, uh, metal detecting or things like that. The gun here in the right hand side, mm -hmm. up on the wall, that one was found under the floorboard upstairs, next to a family Bible. So there's some stuff that was found here on the property and some that wasn't. Who is this above the mantle? I have no idea. No, no, okay. It was an older picture that I'm sure my grandfather knew the significance of, but. It was such an ornate chess board. Major. I can't read. John Gable Breckenridge. Ah. Oh, what's the, um, so it says they were. Sue Monday? Yeah. Uh -huh. So who was he? Jerome Clark. Fake name. Mom. But it said they were in this girl's oh, spies. So spies for who? The so they were spies for the Confederates of the Union. Spying on the Union. Oh, okay. Oh. Anyone that was hung, for the most part, would have been hung for espionage or treason or whatever once the Union yeah. got control of that area. So once the Union got control of this area and they were Confederates, they were hung for yeah. X, Y, Z. Smart, fresh, and orange. Another. Yep. The sun is shining, but another view of the beautiful parlor furniture. How do you, how do you know everybody's stuff? And this is a square this piano, piano, right, Isaac? I'm yes. sorry? Is that a square piano? Yes, it's a square, uh, square grand. Square grand. And oh. it weighs about uh, a million pounds. Oh, my goodness. That's excessive, <laughs> but it, it felt like getting yeah, into this house. Yeah, it's super heavy. That came from Mr. Uh, Simpson as well. Wow. Right. Yeah, I'm looking over here. Piano. There's just treasures everywhere. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that or not. All the silver that's in the house was from him as well. Now who's Marcel? That was mm -hmm. that was him, Mark. Uh, oh, okay. His name yeah. is Marcel. Marcel. He went by about four different names: <laughs> Mark Simpson, Mark Stewart, yeah, Marcel. I mean, at the end of the day, he had about four different names. But that's right. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, where to next? Uh, I guess we can head upstairs. Uh, I'll show you this. This was Mark as well. Mark Stewart. He was a singer as well. Oh, okay. This oh. is the gentleman who donated the furniture mm -hmm. and the items. Are these all people that have been here to the yes. hall? Yeah, there's all sorts of all the different people that have been here at the My home. favorite. Yeah. Oh, is that your favorite? You recognize him? Yes. Um, and so nice. it's a five dollar donation. Yeah. And it's open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday through Saturday, nine to three o'clock. Nine to three. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Look at all that up there, and look at the chandelier. Yeah, there's all the chandeliers also came from Mark. There's chandeliers in just about every room mm. now. Oh wow. All right, shall we head upstairs? I'll show you one other thing before we head up there. If you see this medallion around this chandelier in there. Oh, look at this. Yeah, in the dining room. That's beautiful. It was a pain in the booty to get those things up. Did you have to take them down? They weren't original here. Me and Pat on Bird, we put them up. Wow. And I, um, I just wanted to show some of the absolutely beautiful things that Mr. Simpson donated. Just beautiful. Look at this, isn't that pretty? Yes. 
window panes there. Oh. Uh, it, the top one is the C for Caldwell, and uh -huh. then the bottom one there is uh, a Masonic Freemasons uh, symbol. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Caldwell was a Freemason. Oh, I see. My God. And so whenever that window ended up breaking out, he patched that in there as sort of a tribute to him. Well, how nice. Hey, Cameron, can I get past you? I know that you've told me the significance of that really steep stairway. Thank you, darling. You know, you know what this is? It's just too small. Oh, the yeah. seat is right up there. Different photos. I was just there. Oh, my God. Okay, okay darling. Every time. So this room here was the master bedroom once the house was fully finished. Uh, all the furniture in here was donated by Mr. Simpson. Uh, we actually donated this room, or not donated, but dedicated this room to him. It's oh. his uh, family's memorial room. Oh, wow. All the pictures on the wall up here are his family members. And that was actually his bed that he slept in. Oh, wow. And it was a pain in the butt to get up here as well. I bet it was heavy as all. That is called a full tester, I believe. I believe so. Yep. Oh, look at this chair. Everything is just so ornate. Look at the details on that. Chamber pots. Wow. There's his personal. This gigantic wardrobe here. Uh-huh. That was huge. Heavy to get up here. Oh, look at that. And what's actually cool about up here, uh, you know, most places you go, your hallway is the only way to get to the other room. Right. But here in the hall, where you have your front foyer downstairs where you come in, you also have a little pass through. You look outside and then you come to the other room. Oh, wow. This was a slave wedding ring that we found on the property, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Would have been this is what we're depicting as the hospital room uh-huh uh, the hospital would have been most likely down in the basement uh, but we use this to depict it uh, here we have actually an actual oh, wow. confederate uh an actual confederate uniform oh wow and then just displays to show the use of this house as as a hospital Look at this uh, old wheelchair. Wow, look at that. Hey, can you hurt my butt? Can you make it up here, brother? Yeah. Good job. Why, why is my hump and What was this room? That Hospital was room. This would have probably just been a spare room, but uh, where you, we use it to depict the hospital room. Uh, down in the basement would have most likely been where the hospital would have been used just because trying to get to carry people upstairs or something like that. And it may have even been used as a well, long-term stay for someone who needed, well, like a hospital or that something. that just shows how it was used as a hospital. Hey, don't punch. Uh, what do you have that camera set up for? Is that like a constant? Yeah, we have uh, cameras. We have one above the door over there as well. We just have probably, I think it ends up being 16 cameras to catch everything from different angles in the house. Whether it be for security purposes and for uh, paranormal purposes. Paranormal purposes. So wow. This little quiz, anybody know what this is for? Would you not put coals in there and put it in the bed and heat mm -hmm. the bed? What's that, it called though? I can't remember the name. <laughs> I, was gonna, I, was gonna, oh. I call it like a bed heater. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you put your coals in there. Hey. You close it up, put it in under your mattress. Yep, heat it up. And I don't see yeah. how the stuff did not catch on fire. Isn't that the truth? Uh, who's Jimmy Dove? He was a guy that helped us quite a bit during our uh, Halloween when we did our haunted haunted house. This was his favorite place to hide. He'd be in full blackout stuff. It was dark in here, and he would hide up in the uh, fireplace there. He was and, a skinny fella. Well, he was a 
He wasn't real skinny, but he was a little bit shorter, and he could crunch himself up. He could get in there really well. Anyways. And then you put all black on, and it'd be dark in here. Nobody ever seen the scene. What is this used for? To soak the fire. You blow air into it. Now, does anybody actually sleep in these beds? No. No, nobody ever? See, I don't, I don't understand why you and Madison didn't want a honeymoon here, Isaac. Mm, that's a negative. No? Wait, so, uh... <laughs> Cut. Cut. <laughs> oh, no, I do know. Yeah, you'll get to call me cousin in a little bit. That's right. Okay. So look how thick this is. Yes, uh, this, you saying that, it actually depicts a very big thing. Right. How thick this is and how thick the exterior walls are. This is a load-bearing wall, so any of the load-bearing walls no, and the I exterior know, walls are actually three right bricks right. thick. Three bricks that's, thick. That's very, one cool. thing that really lends itself to the uh, structural sound or structural security of this house. So this would be like a child's room? Yes, this is considered to be Mary Elizabeth's room. Okay. She was the, uh, the child that died in the house uh, one of the children that died in the house. She died from uh, being burned up in the fire downstairs. Oh my goodness. Uh, she was downstairs oh, in the winter God. kitchen. And Ember popped out of her dress. This is actually a picture of her. Okay. And Ember popped out on her dress when she was about 11 years old. And uh, it engulfed her. Oh, uh, she, she ended up living for seven agonizing days before she eventually passed away. Her mother, Mr. Caldwell's first wife, is pictured on the wall up there. Oh. That's Elizabeth Akers Caldwell. Mm -hmm. She Mom was his first daughter. wife and Mary Elizabeth's mother. Yep. Well, mother and daughter. That's right. Yep. Mother and daughter. And then these are plaster walls, aren't they? Isaac? Yes, they're plaster walls on top of the brick. Okay. And uh, as well as the wood slats that hold the plaster together. I see. Second floor. And then that gives a little bit more information. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, little signs on each of the doors mm -hmm. to uh, give some good. information. Uh -huh. Oh, this is a nice photo over here. Let's look at this. <clears throat> yeah, so this is the gal's room. This mm -hmm. is where this door actually wasn't here until the second owner built or came in and I got control of the house. Oh. The only way up in and out of this room was through the tight stairs over here. I was wondering what that was. Yeah, these were rebuilt, but you can see how absolutely steep these stairs are. Oh my that goodness. That was the only way in and out of this room. Would, that, would this have been called the servant stairs? Well, actually, the this was the gal's room. The stairs led from there because while the house was being built, the parents' bedroom was downstairs. Okay. Actually, right below us, which is where we have our storage room now. Uh-huh. Uh, that would have been the original uh, parents' bedroom, and this was the gal's room. The only way in and out was through the parents' bedroom. Gotcha. That was for protection and safety of the children, as well as when the girls ended up becoming teenagers, they couldn't sneak out because they'd have to cut through mom and dad. Right. right. And there's another antique bed. That's the Tudors over here. Hey, Isaac. Um, tell her about the original, the bees. Yeah, uh, you'll see on top of the house, if you see a picture from the outside, uh, now we have a cupola. That was original to the house. Uh, the cupola actually burnt off, and you can actually see some pictures from you know, the earlier 2000s where there was no cupola on the top of the house. Uh, but that's where Mr. Caldwell kept his bees. And uh, another way he would hide soldiers is actually he would put them in his bee suits and put them up in the, in the cupola with his bees. So when the Union would raid the house, they're not gonna go up there with the bees. That's right. So they would go up there and hide there. Uh, but, and I believe we're, we're iffy on the actual date that it happened, the year that it happened. But it was around 1910-ish. Mm -hmm. when the uh, cupola was struck by lightning and it caught on fire. So it just stayed off of the house until we rebuilt it in, uh, I think it was 2018-ish. Oh, we wow. Put it back on. Okay. I love that bed. Who uh, <laughs>
I don't like thinking of what I might see when the light flips. Keep it. All right, so here we're going into the basement. Okay. Oh, I don't know if Cam's going to come down here or not. Yeah, tell Cam just to stay right there, Porsche. Hey, Cam, stay up here, buddy. We'll be fast. It's awfully dark down here and the light's on. Yeah, it's awfully dark. Yeah, it's awfully dark. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, is, it, is it the interior or is it the entire size of the house? Uh, pretty much, yeah. This is not what I envisioned the basement being. Really? Yeah. So this is the tack room. Uh huh. <laughs> we have uh, saws oh, and all the different yeah. tools. Yeah. Uh, this would have actually been where Benjamin, one of the slaves depicted by this mannequin here, he actually stayed in here most of the time. Uh, he had injured his foot out in the fields and they brought him in here and he was the one that would repair all the tools and work on all the leather for him. So he just kind of stayed right in here? Yep, this was his room. Yeah. What is, uh, do you know what the indentation in the floor is for? I'm not 100% sure. We, we sort of have a theory that it was, oh, the floor wasn't original here. Okay. Uh, the floor originally was a dirt floor. Okay. Uh, they put the concrete floor in in the 1900s. And when? The 1900s. 1900s, okay. I think Cam decided he's going to come down here. Yeah. Here. You got your luck running out, Isaac. Yeah, I know. Look how thick the floorboards are. No wonder this house don't wiggle. Holy cow. Look at that little pot belly stove. And you can actually see how the rough cut is. Yeah. Uh, and how it wasn't milled in an actual sawmill wow. like that we know today. And then over here, these stones, you're saying that this came from the property as well? Yeah, these limestone blocks. Uh-huh. And they actually go out to, I don't know if you can see it from in here, but where you see the outside foundation, mm -hmm. they're that thick. Oh, wow. Those are just huge. Mm -hmm. I, want to make this, I want to use that stove. I actually want to use it. Just all kinds of treasures here. Did y'all know that when you mount a horseshoe, you're supposed to actually mount it with the Why eight? points up, Mom? Really? I did. Yeah, I actually yeah. did know that. Look at the bricks. Oh my goodness, look how thick that is. Are these? Those are uh, the depicted remains of two of the soldiers that were uh, uh, buried at Salmon's Crossing. Mm -hmm. uh, they were ended up actually being dug up by the mm -hmm. Sons Confederate veterans and reburied in uh, Greenlaw Cemetery here in Franklin. Oh, so cool. Gave a proper burial. We're not wow. Right. Ooh, look at this little one. Oh, this is the summer kitchen. Winter kitchen. Win winter kitchen. Winter kitchen. Okay. Oh. How cool. Hey. This is where Mary Elizabeth met her demise. Oh, my goodness. Right here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this is very different than what I had envisioned. Yeah, it's, con it's called a full half basement. A full nice. half basement. Because it's a full basement. Then you can look yeah, out, of course. Uh, was it a fire? Did somebody that paint not this a crime? Yes, is that what it was? Ironic. But look, she caught on fire her dress and it's... Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Yeah. Weird. Anyways. But that yeah, really it's a full weird. half because we're halfway underground, right. but it's a full-size basement. Right, you can see out the window there. Oh, this is, looks so, this is so authentic. Amazing. I mean, this is the original fireplace where she would have mm -hmm. caught fire. Wow. Portia, do you like mason jars? I love mason jars. I love these. I have one I can show you here in a little bit. Yeah, hey, well. It's, it's amazing, this one. I have it hidden up the barn. What's a oh, pantry? Okay. Oh, you gotta show the pantry. Oh, yeah, tunnel entrance. Forgot about that. What's down here? Your tunnel entrance. Hey. Oh, wow. 
So the tunnel goes back about three or four foot and it's collapsed in. Uh, but originally it would have went out to the barn and actually wide off to an open room over by where the slave cabin used to be. Oh, I see. Wait. Oops. This house is a jewel. The light's on in there, Isaac. They'll go off. Okay. Yeah, Mom, Just please. pull back on it. I'm gonna break the house. No, it's okay. okay. These were. You gotta close them at the same time. Yeah. Does that go from the outside? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's under the back porch. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, that's about it. Wait, what's this front part up here? Uh, so here we have the library, and then tool room. Uh, let me turn the light on. And then this is like the foyer area. And this actually goes up under the front steps of the house. Oh, really? So that was another hiding spot. Wow. There were just hidey holes everywhere, weren't they? There were. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to check something out before we head upstairs. Okay. I'll wander around and go yeah, look in the... Uh, you want. Okay. If anything pecks me on the shoulder, it is going to be each man for his own. What? Was that another door? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I need this in my house. Here's the light switch, Portia. Let's see if we can figure it out. I don't know. Yeah, we're in the library. We found the sign for light switch, but we yeah. can't find the light switch. So, will people like donate artifacts and different things mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. Oh, who is that? He looks like Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> what was in this little room, Portia? Just closet. Sorry. And that's just more. Oh, right, so oh look at this Victorian. I forgot what that's called. Room divider. Room divider. I bet that's a Victrola right there. So this is used for a spinning wheel. Like entertaining down here. No, that was what, what the room crossed that way. Just in general. That was the library over there. This was just a spare room, and then the foyer would upstairs is directly above this. Mm -hmm. It would have just been a closet, but they would have hit people under the steps. Mm. Oh. So, what purpose did these openings serve, Isaac? No one knows. No one knows. In my okay. opinion, this was used as a makeshift hospital. So, I mean, you oh, run yeah. some boards across and you could lay people on top of them. Oh. Because there are some right directly across, across from each other. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Anyway. And again, you can see how wide these support walls are. Just oh, amazing. Really? You're gonna have to like blow your audio up, see if we can hear any okay, Mr. background spooks. Yeah, everything's friendly. I hope. Did you scoot up here? While we're waiting on Isaac to come out, we're standing on the back porch. And I do like sitting on the back porch because there's always a breeze and we can kind of show you from up here this is the well house that is currently being restored. The steps, maybe that was, the summer kitchen is right there ahead of us. There's a dinner bell. What's this over No, here? that's a railroad bell. That's what was recovered. Oh, okay. Uh, what's that over there? Uh -huh. What do you think that, that was is? the original slave quarters. Oh, okay. Yes. That was falling in. This and then we'll go to the cemetery. I don't know if there's two, one or two cemeteries on the property. Oh, and then these are the outbuildings. Yep. You say you're a huff? So this is the summer kitchen. It's, they would have cooked all our meals outside during the summer to keep the heat out of the house. Daddy long legs. Yep. Daddy long legs. So right there would have been the stove. Could open the windows. Pretty cool. 
pretty basic. Whoops. So the chimney over there is the uh, where the slave cabin used to be, the loom room. Uh, it got eaten up by termites and hey, we had to get rid of it. But uh, the chimney's still there because we're hoping to at some point get a donation to where we can actually rebuild it. Because they run off of donations only. Yeah. They don't receive any money from the government. No money from the state or the federal government. All donation based. And this is definitely worth preserving. What uh, crops do they raise in the field, Isaac? Beans or corn or wheat. Right now, right now it's beans out there. And then there's some St. Croix sheep over there, which are hairless. Are these nails? Well, the, they're they're hair sheep. From the cabin? Yeah. That square nail. That square nail over there. Little nails. Over here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, where Bear or uh, Mike has actually gotten all these nails out. We have some square nails if you want one. Isn't that called coffin nails? Not necessarily. Thirty-one W. It's just right out there. Right. That's what it looks like in this direction. Make sure the cam doesn't touch the fence. Okay. It's hot. Okay. Hey, Cam. The mm -hmm. fence is hot, baby. It's got electricity on it. Yeah. I actually had to put those signs up to say, warning, don't touch. Uh-huh. We had about six people that were over there just touching it. And next thing you know, they get shot. And then they're, the kids, they run off crying. And I'm like, oh. well, I took for granted. You know, I, grew up, know. I grew up knowing about a hot fence. Yeah. I took for granted that other people would know too. Okay, and, this is the wildlife sanctuary. How neat. So this is the family plot. Oh, this is the cemetery. It's the family cemetery. Oh, wow. Cemetery, right? mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't see the gate over there. So this is the entry to it. Now, was this here when, no. okay, you all built this up? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. So who is buried in here, Isaac? Mary Elizabeth, the one that died, her mother, Elizabeth, mm -hmm. and uh, Elizabeth's other child, AJ, was Andrew Jr. Uh -huh. He was 18 months old when he died. He oh, fell down the so steps. Oh. So where was the little girl buried? Mary Elizabeth, she was. Oh. Her, her mama, and her brother, AJ. Which so there's three. Yeah. If I'm remembering right, and I don't know if I am, this is Elizabeth, that's Mary Elizabeth, and that's AJ. Who, do you know who this is? That's just a footstone. Okay, okay, gotcha. Hmm. Wow. What's the what significance of the coins on the footstone, Isaac? People will come and leave coins. It's the thought that you need coins to pass the river of river sticks because Charon the ferryman on the river of sticks of collects people, his pay so a lot of times when people mm -hmm. bring coins and leave them I think there's probably some out there as well I did not know that yep wow and then you, this trail here leads back to the uh, slave oh okay what's the step through here these really to get you who lambs? Uh, the Burks. The Hacks Burks. Hmm. I let them, we have an agreement he can put his sheep out here and it keeps everything cleaned off. Yes. Instead of me having to push hog in there. Yep. That's nice. a great arrangement. Place? Right across the road over there. Mm -hmm. Oh, Isaac, this tree. My goodness, that's huge. They're bald cypress trees. Bald cypress. Yeah, they, they're not supposed to grow here. They're supposed to grow, you know, in water. Really? So like your Louisiana area and stuff like that. Uh, but the reason they're actually able to grow here is because Sinking Creek runs across here. Oh, so there's water underneath. You see the trench right here? Yes. 
That's where it sort of comes back up. Uh huh. But it goes back down underwater. Oh. I see. Here. So it's basically got water running to it nonstop. Wow. So people put flowers on these right here. Hot. These aren't stones, like uh, gravestones. These were made when they separated the Confederate soldiers that had died here and were buried here as well. People put flowers because they found stones. These aren't gravestones. The gravestones that are slaves are all inside the tree circle. The tree circle. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. The tree circle. Isn't this something? Oh, wow. Do you know if these trees were planted to make a tree circle? They were. <gasps> yeah. Really? They were actually shipped in from Louisiana. This is like uh, an Ireland mm -hmm. tradition, wouldn't it be? It's this. It's a tradition that the slaves used, that the Africans used. Really? Yeah. Wow. This is so. so these neat. are all the slaves' graves. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many there are? I can't remember off the top of my head, and honestly, some of them may be to where you can't see them, and there's some more. Right. You see the line of. And it makes sense. And then there's some here as well. So I'm thinking there's probably more than what we can see because those are all, they're just field stones and they break, you know, pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Camera, our Porsche's placing flowers on all the graves. Look at the inside of this tree. Isn't that neat? Who did the split rail fence, Isaac? The split rail, that was my grandfather. Oh, I love that. Yeah, he did the split rail. Do you wanna, have you got a couple of stories to tell about your granddaddy? Yeah, uh, well I can, I can tell you a little ghost story about my granddaddy. I was out here moving a trailer whenever my grandfather had gotten pretty sick and uh, he had quit coming out here because he couldn't drive anymore. And so I was moving the trailer and I was unhooking it and somebody came up and they were wearing like just some gray clothing. I didn't think much of it. And it as clear as day as someone standing next to me, you know, and they said, uh, where's Billy at? And I said, well, he's, he's not, he, he hadn't been here in a little while. And he's like, yeah, I've been trying to catch him and I hadn't seen him in a while. I said, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's been pretty sick. And he said, oh, okay. And then he walked towards the barn, which is the opposite direction of the road. And so I finished unhooking the trailer, which was all I had to do was unplug it. And I unplugged it and went to go see if I could find the guy so I could get his name. And he had walked towards the barn, he was gone just nobody was there at all so my thought is it was probably a spirit asking about him because he hadn't been out here so long but well and i think that you know the the people who are here unseen they saw your grandfather's yeah. intentions and i think they were probably very happy i think so too i mean any like you said the unseen they seemed to be very they respected him it seemed like and uh, then missed him oh exactly for sure. Well, for you sure. got you have big uh, boots to fill, Isaac. Yeah, I'm trying to fill. Oh, you're doing a good job. I'm to. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the Octagon Living Hall Museum in Franklin, Kentucky, and a special thank you to Isaac for um, spending the time with us and just giving us such an in-depth uh, tour of this historic property and before we go i wanted to point out that right over there with the tree with the white fence around it is the largest living dogwood in the state of kentucky so if you are anywhere near this is such a wonderful place to come out and visit so much history here and just so many interesting artifacts inside the house and like he said, it is open Wednesday through Saturday, 9 to 3, and it's a $5 donation per person.